thing. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Because Zixan, would you mind starting praying for us? All right, of course. In English, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to uh, gather together um, on Zoom um, to have a book study, Lord and a Bible study. Uh, I pray that we'll have a blessed time together and to have a good time of fellowship together and to learn from your word and to apply it to our lives, Lord. Um, but please bless this time. Bless Ming, uh, bless Mr. Swanson, and uh, everybody um, that's coming in to Zoom, Lord. And I pray this in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Actually, let me okay. send a link to Mr. Swanson too. So. He oh. should be, he's in conference, Ima Kai Kai Chu. But, um, oh, okay. yes, so I will see if he can join too. But this study we talked about, um, did you, were you able to get the book, Martin Lloyd Jones' Sermon on the Mount? Uh, I ordered it, but, uh, it's not coming till Monday. So I went to Google Books to see if okay. they have it. Okay. Uh, and then, they kind of had it. They yeah. sort of did. Um, I can just read it because I was just going to read what we went okay. through last time that's, and that's um, go through it for, for you since there's not much guys coming in right now because um, we usually have mm -hmm. like um, two more people. Um, one is Chad, mm -hmm. one is Scott. and um, mm -hmm. But they are they are busy today maybe. So... So last time we went through, you can flip to Matthew chapter 5. Okay. And if you don't mind, I would like you to read Matthew chapter 5. Um, hey. The Sermon on the Mount session. The Beatitudes. Okay. All right. To probably the 12, right? Yep. Yep. All right. Yes. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And that's up until 12. Thank you. So last time we went through the three main grand lesson of um, the Martin Lloyd-Jones mm -hmm. Sermon on the Mount book. It's a really good book. And the first lesson is that he said, first, all Christians are be like this. Read the Beatitudes. And then you have a description of what every, every Christian are meant to be. We are meant to be like this. Mm -hmm. And this is not merely a description of some exceptional Christian, like Svalashino mm Christian -hmm. Um, But the Lord does not say that he is going to paint a picture what certain outstanding characters are going to be can be in this world it is his description of every single christian so mm -hmm. it's our kokolozashi it's our um target it's our goal and this also called um remind us that we are called to be saints like in corinthians mm -hmm. and this also remind us that we are meant to exemplify everything that is contained here in the Beatitudes. So we should get rid of every false notions that mm. this is not a description of Huston Taylor or George Mueller or Whitfield or Wesley's of this world. They are not exceptional people, but every mm. Christian can be like this. 
And how do we be like this, right, Kazuksa? Um, mm. We can only become like this and rise up to this high standard by the Holy Spirit. And the second principle also say Christians are meant to manifest all of this. Mm. You know, poor in spirit, merciful, pure in heart, mourning, peacemaking, being prosecuted. And because 1 Corinthians 11, 1, it talks about us being imitator of Christ, right? That's a commandment. Mm. He did not nag us. He did not, it was not a, like an advice, but it's a commandment. He asked us to do it. Melee, melee So, mm -hmm. and the third point is that we have to be focusing on all these character does not, we are not every day looking at, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to work on my meekness today. I'm going to work on poor in spirit today. I'm going to get, go through evangelism and get prosecuted by that. It's not like that. It's one in general, in all. It's like a fruit of the spirit. It's one. So, um, and he said the worldly man, the people in the world, uh, non-Christian, may, could be meek, could be humble, could be very, very nice. And what's the difference of us to them? Mm -hmm. What do you think, Kazakhstan? Um, let's see. So, does it say in the book? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question again? Which one is it? Yes, so there are natural men that rely mm -hmm. on, oh, they have right. natural meekness, right? And mm -hmm. they're in the world, they totally deny the faith, but they are nice mm -hmm. people. So, what right. are the difference of them and us? Right. Well, one thing we could say probably is their motivation. Mm -hmm. Um, for their works, um, are they doing it Christ-centered or are they doing themselves centered? You know, um, one of the things is uh, as Christians, we have Christ in our lives. We, you know, we put Christ in the center of our lives and whatever we do, we do it for the glory of God. But uh -huh. to those who does not have, you know, Christ in them, you know, what is their motivation? What is, you know, that's something to question about. And that's, I think, that's the biggest difference between right. us Christians. Yeah. Right. Right, right. Because the worldly man, they are focusing on money, gaining relationship, mm -hmm. trying to fakely love someone to get the worldly gains out. As Christian, we mm -hmm. have to be aware we don't do that. And we just love it because we love our brothers because he first loved us, right? Mm -hmm. He died on the cross and bleed us, mm -hmm. bleed for us to wash us clean. And so... And also they are nat naturally, uh, in the third point, he mentioned there are natural Christians. So what do, you, what do you, it mean by natural Christian is that there is the person never saying harsh word or unkind judgment, always good. It's like Japanese or Asian people, very moralistic and I think they're a good yeah. person. Because I was one time that person, right? Because mm -hmm. when a doctor asked me, why do you want to build shelters for people? And then two years ago, I would answer, I'm a good person. That's why. But mm -hmm. every one of us deserve to go to hell and go to jail because we are all sinners. We sin in our thought and all that. But mm -hmm. the main difference is that we are aware of our weakness. We are aware of our weakness and the worldly man always think about exalting himself, making himself look bigger than God. Mm -hmm making himself stronger and pride right and if we look at the biblical example paul right paul is um and peter peter mm -hmm. in second peter you can see he's very prideful right and you can look at um first peter 2 11 and 12. first peter 2 11 yeah, right. first Peter says, 3, 11. Uh, okay. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, 
they may be your good works, which they shall behold, glorify in the day of visitation. Right. And this is the, how different are we from worldly people, Kazakhstan? Well, according to here, we have, uh, you know, um, so, let's see. We're different with, you know, um, you know, we abstain, well, and according to Peter, it says we abstain, I beseech you to stranger as strangers, abstain for flesh to lust, as mean, that's mean like contrasting with those they have, you know, abstain fleshly lusts. And, you know, we abstain for fleshly lusts, but they go towards fleshly lusts, you know, which are against right. the soul. And, you know. Right. And where in the Bible it talks about works of flesh? There's one passage about um, works of flesh. You can flip to Galatians 5 and Galatians try to 5. tell me. Galatians 5. Um... Mm -hmm. Verse 19 to 20. 19, yes. mm -hmm. All right. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, Okay. Adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such as like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, that they which do not do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Right. And that ties into second first Peter, what we just read, is that fornication mm -hmm. or like sex outside marriage or before marriage and all these impurity impurity things covetousness and all these wanting everything that's a worldly man he think it's okay to think and sin muslims they think they can sin in thought and as long as they don't work out but the only god that i know that care about us that have the name of mercy and goodness is our god Yeho yahweh that mm -hmm worries about what we think so that he said when you look at a woman lustfully you have committed adultery mm -hmm. that he he have high standard for us but that's a mm -hmm. better way to live because it's right. it's different from the worldly people and we have a craving for righteousness we are called to be righteous just like in first peter 2 11 2 12 what we read mm -hmm. escape from all the lust of the flesh i want mm -hmm. that car i want that mansion i want that beautiful lady to be my wife that's all lust of the world right. and we are different from the worldly man because a christian is consistent it should be consistent more than the worldly man because we rely on god we pray all the time first timothy 2 8 praying everywhere lifting up hands without wrath and doubt yes. against god right mm -hmm. and we love others love is patient love is kind Love is not boasting or envy. Love is not exist its own way. And these are the characters that are not seen in a worldly man. Because when they want to get a contract done, they're going to force you, negotiate, mm -hmm. and they just want to get your money and all that. And uh, Martin Lloyd-Jones said, again, it's our conversation and all our actions are called to glorify God. And we are aware of our limitation and Sermon on the Mount is a way to see how we can live as Christ. So let's go into what it actually mean to live like Christ. So let's go to blessed are the poor in spirit. Um, back to Matthew. Right. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the poor in spirit. What does it mean to be poor in the spirit for their kingdom is in heaven? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you? It means to be, uh, you know, I've heard of one, um, I've heard of one where, way of saying is poor in spirit means to be, you know, broken and be humble. Yes. Um, you know, um, in, in the, um, you know, yeah, I think it's um, because, you know, in um, the Japanese version, it's, uh, you know, Kono mazushi mono saiwai desu. Mazushi. Mazushi. So, right, it needs to be, you know, broken and humble, I think. 
Right, right. And why would the broken people? Why would Mazushi Mono, uh, Tengoku no Ikeru? Why would they be able to go to heaven? What do you think? Well, first of all, when you have a broken heart and you have a you know, you know, have humble heart, you know, the I think the more wave, you know, more, you know, I would say. I don't want to say easier, but I would mm. say more, um, you know, um, easier for them to grasp the gospel, right? You know, if it's, uh -huh. you know, prideful, the gospel is not for the proud people, for, for uh, rather for the humble people. So I would, that's what I would probably think. Exactly. Because what makes us sinner is that we agree, I agree with your point is that they have to be humble first. And we realize the meaning of humble is that we can't do anything. We depend on the Holy Spirit and Christ to save us from sin. And that's a big step because the worldly man, or what I used to think is that I can save myself out of that fire pit. I can climb out, but I can't because sin is more powerful than my own flesh. If I didn't admit Christ, that I didn't have a stronger presence of a Holy Spirit to be them. There's not a stronger rival to my sin. And Martin Lloyd Jones here is said, this is a very definite order in the Beatitudes, and this is a key for us to obtain all other qualities like meekness. That come from us realizing we can't do much and we are not powerful. God is helping us. So that meekness is defined as inner humility. Like Christ before Pilate, um, he asked, are you the king of the Jews? And he said, if, if that is what you ask for, yes. Yet my kingdom is not of this earth. My kingdom is in heaven. Right. He did not boast of, oh, yes, I'm the king. I, I will own you. Mm -hmm. I can destroy you. I just become humble on the mm -hmm. heavens so that I can save your sin. He didn't do that. He didn't say that even though he is the universal God and he can save or destroy Pilate in just a second. But he didn't chose to do that. He tell him, mm -hmm. my kingdom is of heaven. I'm not telling you that I'm, I can destroy you. He can. He didn't say it. I can bring you to hell. He didn't say it. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it's just very, very impressive. I was reading this today for our life because we do a lot of works, right? And sometimes mm -hmm. maybe leading right. a youth group or doing all these can lead us to pride. Yet, you know, it's really humbling. That in a scripture, you know, you maybe remind me where it is, Kazuk-san, is that it talked mm -hmm. about you do good for the father, you keep doing good for the father, and do not mention it, for your reward is hidden in him. Mm. Somewhere about not boasting your work. So, right. probably in okay. Matthew. Okay, maybe. Yeah. Boasting. I think it's part of the Sermon on the Mount, or? Um, I think it's outside Sermon. I think it's maybe Matthew chapter 8, I was thinking. Okay. Of like, do not boast about what you do. Or maybe James, yeah. Okay. Oh, rewards, yes. Maybe Matthew 10. Matthew 10? Okay. Yeah, Matthew 10, 40. 10, 40. Okay. The he or that it was... said... Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. okay. Um, he that receives you receives me, and he that receives me 
receives him that sent me. That's Matthew ten forty. Is that? Yep. And yeah. continue to read uh, about the water, forty two. Forty two. Forty one through forty two, please. 41, 42. Okay. He that receives a prophet in the name of the prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Okay, this one. And he that receives a righteous man in the name of the righteous man shall be receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Right. This one means pretty deep things. And it said, mm -hmm. one who speak to God will receive a prophet's reward. One who speak for God. And what is our God like? What's the first mm -hmm. impression that you have on who our God is like? Kazuk said. Personally? Yep. Not personally? Um, I think he's, uh, first of all, he's, you know, he's thorough and just. You know, he's Thrill merciful. A lot of people think, you know, God is love, but for me, um, you know, it's not, it's not, that's not more about love. It's more of, you know, thorough and just, and then, mm -hmm. you know, but he's merciful as well. Right. For real. Mm -hmm. That is God. And mm -hmm. Jesus, when he do things, when God do things, does he boast about what he do? Or did he just do it and tell people not to boast about it? Yeah, he did. He didn't. I mean, you know, it's something he did something that's worthy of everybody telling um, all the other people that he did it. But he said one to the one, the one who um, healed the um, the leper. He says, "Just go to the priest and then you know, um, you know, show your body to him, but do not tell anyone about this. You know, the miracle I did." Right. So, you know. Yeah. So it was, you know maybe a kind of humility or but um he's more of like you know um some some people will believe you know i didn't i don't, I don't think jesus wanted people to believe because of the sign but because by faith you know right. i don't think you know, some people would say you know this they will believe you know so and so because they did a sign you know they won't they are basing their faith upon what he did, but not what he is. Is it kind of clear? It makes sense, yeah. So it makes sense because he didn't boast about his own work. Thank you for mentioning the leper. Yeah. And so as we continue in the book, he said, the kingdom of God is the manifestation of a fullness, and us being poor in spirit is a manifestation of a fullness because can someone full with worldly knowledge be poor in spirit? No, they'll be, they'll be puffed up in pride uh, with all their knowledge. Right. Can a water cup that is already full of water receive more water? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Right. And in Japanese, it's like, mazu wa kalap boy. Like first, first I need to be kalap boy. Um, mm -hmm. I have to empty myself, right. Mm -hmm. right? And empty until the old wine is poured out. Mm -hmm. We cannot be filled unless we are first empty. Mm -hmm. And this comes to mind of one of the statements that has to be kind of emptying before there's filling, because there's two sides of gospel. There is hipari, that is pulling and raising up, mayage. Mm -hmm. And you remember the words of ancient Simeon concerning our Lord and Savior when he held him as an infant in his arm. He said, this children is set for the fall and rising again of many. The fall before the rising again. It is essential part of gospel that the conviction must always precede conversion. Conviction, conversion. Conviction is before conversion. <laughs> The gospel of Christ condemns before it releases. Now, the obvious thing is that fundamental thing. If you want me to put into a more theological and doctrinal form, I would say there is no more perfect statement of the doctrine of justification of faith only than the Beatitudes. 
because in faith we have to receive when we realize we're not enough we cannot save ourselves from sin mm -hmm. we don't have righteousness so that's why we perceive receive god yeah. And this is the foundation. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs and theirs only is the kingdom of God and mm -hmm. the kingdom of heaven. Not only that, it is obvious, therefore, a very searching test for every one of us, not only as we face ourselves, but especially as we come to face the whole message of the Sermon of Mount. Mm -hmm. You see, it at once, at one time, condemns every idea of the Sermon on the Mount, which thinks it in terms of something that you can, I can do it myself. Mm -hmm. This poor in spirit sets apart as a standard that we cannot do for ourselves. Why? Because at the very beginning, there's this very obvious condemnation that men, when they hear about the gospel, they think of, oh, I got to bring people in the kingdom. I got to build the kingdom myself, right? Mm -hmm. But this view is very dangerous because there's a mountain that you have to scale, the heights that you have to climb. But the first thing you need to realize is that as you look at the mountain, you are told that you must ascend, is that you cannot do it, that you are utterly incapable of yourself. And that any attempt to do it in your own strength is proof positive that you have not understood it. It condemns the very view that a man put into operational immediately as he is. And before we go on to deal with it from what we might call a more spiritual standpoint, there's one matter concerning rendering this verse that has to be considered. The Bible never taught about poverty is a good thing, mm -hmm. right? right? And the poor man is no nearer to the kingdom. Even though Luke, remember, it said, blessed are the beggars, for they shall receive the kingdom of heaven. And um, mm -hmm. Pastor Swanson preached that last um, week. And mm -hmm. I can send you the link on Sermon Audio. Yet yeah. it, mm -hmm. it talks about a beggar receiving the kingdom of heaven, but are all beggars, do all beggars receive kingdom of heaven? All mm. the beggars in California, all the beggars in the world, do they, are they already saved? Why would they receive kingdom of heaven? Yeah. Kind of reminds me of the parable he told about Lazarus and uh -huh. the rich man. You know, he, Lazarus was a poor man, but he was, you know, when the, as the story goes, as the parable goes on, you know, you see the rich man in the, you know, in the hell, in hell, and uh -huh. then the rat Lazarus in heaven. And it's just, you know, what do you think about that parable? You think that, you know, the leper and the, well, not leper, the, the poor man, the Lazarus man. being yeah. up in heaven. Yeah. And rich man, you know. I think it's Lazarus just, at that point. Lot. Hi. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. I think, thank you for bringing up that example, because I think Lazarus um, and us who are poor, because um, it reminds me of C.S. Lewis, before he died, there's a quote called, we are all beggars. Mm. We beg for God's mercy every day. Right. Mm -hmm. We beg for him to provide us daily food, a wife or a family. We ask and we beg that he will keep us righteous away from sinning in our thoughts. At least that's what I do. And I'm just a beggar, brother. And this is very crucial because the rich man, he's filled with lust of the world. He is hedonism itself. He can enjoy all the things. He has food and he never stops eating because food is always supplied. But when a poor man like Lazarus, he doesn't have food all the time, he think of what's eternal. He set his mind up high. He was like, okay, what long-term, what can I do to bring a purpose or something like, because men who eats all the time don't think about things like that. 
you know, mm -hmm. and that's why sometimes we fast and mourn and that is a great example and i also mentioned want to mention a related example is that mm -hmm. poverty it doesn't guarantee spirituality right mm -hmm. and in luke 6 we can see it become perfect that the lord said poor poor like lazarus doesn't mean like physically poor but it means not being possessed by the worldly spirit not being possessed by the worldly lust, not wanting that car, not want, I drive a very crappy car. And, you know, I'm not, I don't need a good car because God has provided every needs. I don't need a car that looked better because mm -hmm. I'm a broken man and I don't need to care about what others look at my car, but I need to care about myself as the temple of God because God never said your car, your house, your possession, are the temple of God. In Ephesians 1 through 2, it only said, we as the creation of God are a workmanship and are temple of God. Right. right. And that's that's a crucial thing because many other things mm -hmm. that as we go, like water bottle and um, computer, these are all, are they created by God or man? No, yeah, they're all men. Jinzo the key. Mm -hmm. and we need to focus our eyes up on eternity and a poor man just like what you mentioned he is he does not rely up on riches because he know a beggar goes out he back every day he have to beg for a living and do we beg for christ's mercy and do we beg for him fixing our sin every day are we beggars in our lives Mm -hmm. so that's one way to be poor in spirit is to realize how much things we can be grateful of Kazakhstan. and our car our living condition our house chair computer everything god has supplied us and because we need it because he needed for us to fulfill our plans in him and we back him but do we back him and thank him all the time. When a beggar receive a coin, do he thank the person who dropped the coin? Or do he just wait for another coin? Mm. We need to be that thankful beggar so that we will be more happy. Blessed are poor in spirit, right? Blessed means happy. And when we give thanks to everything we receive, little coin or big coin, we receive God's new mercies and his grace and this is a confirmation of how can we be more grateful and happy. Any questions mm. so far? Um, yeah, well, um, the, the poor and yeah, it's just, it says poor in spirit, right? Uh huh. The episode of poor in spirit. Isn't it? Yes, poor in the spirit. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, right. It doesn't, yeah, it actually doesn't really mean, yeah, um, just hits me that, you know, not a physical poorness you know no matter what your state is in, in you know the, the wealth and financial status you know you know if you're it, it's the you know all the other things as you said and all the other things you know we made and it's you know man-made but you know if it's that's the material things you know the the one that matters you know is our heart and our soul if it's oh, if it's amen. poor in the spirit you know if it's poor in the spirit you know you know that's that that's the you know bottom line. If you're a poor in the spirit, our you know will be heirs the kingdom of heaven, as as is said in Matthew five, right? So right. That's what you know kind of hit me. You know, there's a clear distinction, clear boundary between what materialism and what our soul is. You know, so exactly. And then, and it doesn't matter what the material things. It's gonna fade away, but your soul will not fade away. You know, mm -hmm. this is your soul will go on to, you know, go to heaven or go to hell, right? So it's very important. And I think it's important to see that, you know, there's a clear distinction between the material wealth and your spiritual state. You know? Exactly. Spiritual state. Spiritual state. Because are we always wanting more? Or are mm -hmm. we always being filled? Are we thinking 
us as an empty cup keep being poured in the world? Or are we mm-hmm. always thinking in Christ, filling us, filling the crack in our heart, like an epoxy, so that we can be filled, even though however much little we receive? Because mm-hmm. uh, poor in spirit and poor physically, meaning that we are sad, we are depressed, but that little happiness, that Bible scripture, that Thanksgiving, Psalm one hundred four said, "Enter the Lord's gate with thanksgiving." Thankful for little water that we get, the clean water, and know that every place in Africa and other places, people have to walk three miles, three point seven miles, in bare feet, to get a murky water with a lot of parasite eggs in it, and they would die at thirteen. Because the parasite have rooted at their intestine, and we got in America water filter and all these great things that we do not deserve.、Mm-hmm. And isn't that that alone gives us happiness? And on top of that, we are blessed with a house and clothes, <laughs> warm clothes, and a place to sleep sweetly,、mm-hmm. instead of being in war, worry about when does the nuke or the bomb hit us next time. You know. It's we are very blessed, and if we start being in poor in spirit, being downcast, being not in a state of always joyful, but think of but how much Christ has sacrificed for us, Kazuksa. We are truly poor in spirit because our Lord died for us, came from heaven, gave up all the greatness, and died for us. First of all, you know when. We count our blessings, right? You know, we've been talking about this. It's like you count your blessings and name them one by one, and we realize that we don't even deserve. Well, we don't. We don't deserve what the lifestyle we're, you know, we're doing. We deserve hell, but for, from God's mercy and God's love towards us, you know, the gospel is, the gospel itself, is you know something it's undeserved, and you know. His great mercy is his great vast mercy. We just, it's you know, there's a problem with people who's, you know, their hearts won't be humbled with that, you know. Yes. You know, compared. To that. So. Yes. Yes. And just a little bit, I will screen share just this, and、um, this is JLB, but just want to share a bit about. What we are going through is like kokono no hinshi, like the poor in heart, right? And shiawase des. Right. Hey, it's we have to be poor in our heart, and what does it mean to be poor in our heart, poor in spirit? Is that just like what you said? Count our blessing. Know that we do not deserve it.、Mm-hmm. Right. And continue on this. Uh, he continued talked about, "Blessed be the poor in spirit." Talks about he's not admired by the world, but it's despised by it. He hates everything going on is in his life. He hates his sinful flesh. Kazuksan, if I would tell you how much time I want to haragiri, haragiri is、um, you know seppuku, right? Like killing myself because of my sinful、right. flesh. I cannot imagine like. I cannot imagine like how much, how much, thin that I think through here. Seppuku,、mm-hmm. I would、yeah. cut myself open. And that、mm-hmm. is, that is shows us we are we hate the world, we hate ourselves. We this flesh is of the world. The flesh is always yearning after the world, but we're created in God's image. Temple of God, and we always, always have to go back to not self-reliance, not relying on our own flesh, not relying on our own confidence, but to rely on God.、Mm-hmm. Right. And Jesus is the lover of your soul. In Psalms, it continues saying, Charles Wesley have a song called "Just and Holy is Thy Name." I am all unrighteousness, vile and full of sin. I am. Thou art full of truth and grace. 
Then he ridiculed and asked, "When men desire a post or a job, like you want that banking job, or I want the engineer job, I want this, this, would it dream? Would that guy dream? The employer told him, 'Vile and full of sin you are.' He won't because it's ridiculous. Because people don't look at men." As a temple of God, as a representation of holiness, but they see it as a tool for money. That's a worldly man.、Mm-hmm. But we are looking at men face to face to God. We every day, whenever we sin, God sees it and He's taking note of it. And it's foolish to talk about personality nowadays.、Uh, he said. Because when someone go to a committee, he will say, "Oh, he's lacking the personality. Oh, that guy preach on the stage. He's not looking good. He doesn't look like a preacher. He doesn't dress up nice." This is people judging others because they are not poor in spirit. Because when someone is poor in spirit, if our heart is depressed, we will focus on his words, God's words, instead of the outer flesh. Okay. Because if we are poor in spirit, we would not care who gave us food, because the scripture is a spiritual food, right?、Mm-hmm. And we would not care about when we are hungry, when we are poor. We won't care about who gave us money, because we know it's it's good food, it's good spiritual food. We won't care about that much, but the worldly man do. So what does that mean? Poor in spirit continuously. Paul, when he went to Corinth. He said, "We preach not ourselves, Kazuksa. When、mm-hmm. we go on preaching, when we go teach, when you teach in Awana, it's not about preaching ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord."、Mm-hmm. He tell us that he went in weakness and in fear, in much trembling, in Corinthians. And you read the old records of the activity of God's greatest workers, missionaries. Evangelists, and you see how self-effacing they are. But today, we are experiencing something that are completely reversal of this. Advertisement and photographs, names,、mm-hmm. fake names on ministry, ca-、yeah. caring about their own name. But do these、mm-hmm. things last, Kazuksa? I'm sorry. But do these things last? Will after ten, ten decades,、no. people still remember John Piper? John Piper, will they still remember? We'll still remember maybe the prosperity gospel guy who is always about himself, right? Joe Osteen.、So. You know, as much as their faith is genuine and what they're preaching is true,、um, you know, they do say time will tell, right? Right.、Um, you know, what is true? Truth will never change, and those、Amen. who Th- those who proclaim the truth will be remembered for sure, because truth will never change. And if the truth is no, will never change, then the people who are preaching the truth are still consistent, even, you know, even as as far as time would want to go, and what, as far as God would like to extend the time, they will be remembered because they were consistent, consi- where they were consistent in preaching the truth. Amen.、So. Amen. Amen. And continue.、Uh, he said, "But do you agree that the world nowadays is full of self, about exalting yourself, about praising yourself, about putting your name out, advertising?、Right. Mm-hmm. Do you、yeah. think God like that? I don't think so. And that's one of the most、uh, major problem with、uh, the church these days. Is you know." Um, it's all it's all about the name. I think you know. Yes. When when the pastor becomes the center of the church, there's a big problem there. And you know these you know the well where the church is not where we worship God, but when it's replaced as a place where we listen to the worship, listen to the、right. band, entertainment, and, entertainment. Yes, and you know we listen to. The really, you know, lukewarm gospel. Oh,、yeah. there's a problem with that. You know, it's not Christ-centered because the gospel is supposed to condemn people and to leave 
the con the the people guilty of their sins, and um, you know, there, there's a big problem with the church these days. You know, they're not doing what, you know, what Christ has commanded us to do. To, you know, and then you know, when yeah, when they um, I said it before, when they have the pastor at the center of the church, not Christ at the center of the church, and it's not the church anymore. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Amen. That those are deep words. Those are very sobering because just like what you say, the world is full of entertainment and pleasing of other men, mm -hmm. trying to make ourselves look big instead mm -hmm. of God looking big. Right. And continue here. It said, "Us Christian must rethink these matters because to be poor in spirits, it's not as popular." Nowadays, no one would advert yeah. advertisement would say, "Be poor in spirit, keep keep humble, humble yourself, be poor in spirit. Don't mm -hmm. care about the world. You forget about being rich. You forget about driving Ferrari. You forget about getting a big house. You just live in a mm -hmm. small house and help people, and uh, always be troubled about your own sin and pray to God for forgiveness." Do they preach that on TV? Do they preach that at church? They do not. No, they they more go into the God will, um, God is there to fulfill your dreams. God yeah. is here to, you know, uh, you know, make your life better. You know, and it's just very um, misunderstood gospel. And they're very, um, you know, it's man-centered. You, yeah, you, you right. mentioned you know, man-centered. Man and people are being captive, Kazuksam, about this worldly the theology, worldly right. psychology. Yeah. Yes. It's very um, comfortable for them. It's not, you it know, is. it's not ear itching. You know, it's it's really you know comfortable and it's really you know, yeah. Wilkerson, um, Wilkerson have a really good sermon about mm -hmm. anguish. Mm -hmm. You can look him up, Thomas Wilkerson, and he talk about anguish. Do you anguish? Do you cry? You know, mm -hmm. anguish. So it talks about a call to anguish. It continue talks about how important it is for us to be poor in spirit. Mm hmm.
Amen. So that's just a short uh, sermon. He's one of my favorite um, preacher. And he have a full sermon here, which, you know, we can watch next time. But his beginning is just very humble, very different. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. That reminds me of the, you know, reminds me of the verse, um, 1 Corinthians 7.10. First says, for godly scholars. I think second Corinthians, sorry, second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, second Corinthians. seven ten. Let's flip to that. Yeah. <clears throat> now it says for godly sorrow produces repentance. Yes. Sorrow that produces repentance. That will be you know, that will lead to salvation that will not be regretted. And then of the sorrow, but the sorrow of the world produces death. And uh, yeah. It's sorrow, you know, it's godly sorrow that we serve genuine repentance. And uh, the church these days, you're not doing that. No. And it's, uh, they're happy. It's very they concerning. Are, they're, it's, I think it's okay to worship, yet it's just there's not a grief, a lot of sense that every time you take communion, do you think of Christ bleeding on us? Do you think of Christ that rusty nail strike right into there? Wearing the crown of throne mm -hmm. and I wear it one time in my friend's house. It was painful. And I just barely slide it on my head. And I was reading Romans one through three, just three chapters. And I have to take it off. It was painful. And Christ was being forced into the scalp. Hmm. That was, that, he doesn't deserve that treatment, right? He doesn't. It's us. It's us that we do deserve it. Yeah. It's us who should be crucified. And that, that source yeah. should stab us. And to myself, mm -hmm. I want to, you know, like still when I commit sin or like try to please men, try to commit sin and fall, I was like, why do I still think like this? Because I didn't have that anguish. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't right. anguish over the Lord's death every day. I wasn't poor in the spirit. And to warp up this study for today, is we have to be poor in spirit and anguish. What have right. God done for us? That we deserve mm -hmm. on the cross and die, yet he died for us. Mm -hmm. Now, let's, let's end with a prayer. And I will pray. Mm -hmm. You can join in. Father God, we are empty, hopeless, naked, vile, but you are the all-sufficient one. Thank you, God. Thank you for sending Jesus to save us. God, we, who are we to deserve this? Who are we to deserve your blood, your holy body to die for us so that we might not sin by the Spirit? Why do we deserve this? Lord, increase our faith. Don't let our faith out nothing. Increase the faith of America. Increase the faith in all nations. Let's preach the gospel to all corners and help the Christian they're being prosecuted. Let them be poor in spirit and let us feel weak and poor, God. Increase our faith. Cast out the demon in our heart through reading your words continuously and hearing of your word because faith grows by hearing. So let us hear your word all the time, letting your word be next to our ear and brain all the time. And let us be aware in our weakness and fear and tremble. Tremble, Lord. Let us tremble. And God, don't let us be like Peter, who are naturally aggressive and self-assertive and self-confident. But God, we know that you, you will change us. We ask that even if we are prideful, you will change us. You will change me from a prideful man to a meek man, to from a bold man, to become poor in spirit. And we shall not rely on our natural birth or family or anyone. How do we really think about myself when I think of myself in terms of God? 
how does God view us? If I live my life, what are the things that I'm praying about? What are the things that I like to think about about myself? God, let us both repent and think of how we look at ourselves, how we look at our work. Are we scarring our flesh? Are we putting, letting worldly man put the knife to our flesh and slice it and suffer hardship? Or are we just trying to be comfortable? God, we just pray for Pazuk San, his ministry in Awanis. Just help him to spread the word of gospel and let us anguish when there will be a kid that doesn't understand and doesn't hear the gospel and run out of the door and go to hell. Lord, we don't want them to see you care about the children. You want to let them hear your word. So God, help me, help Kazuksan in my youth group, in his ministry, to not just do lip service, to not just be empty talker, but truly anguish over your death and have this motivation to do work, to do all for your glory. And let's be gratitude. Everything we receive from water to shelter, your parents to everything and your word, most importantly, and your body and Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus' holy name, I pray, let us pursue holiness. And that's the only way to heaven. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, this opportunity to study your word with Brother Ming. Um, I pray for the um, the state of the church right now, um, and that the church will be meek in spirit, Lord, to be poor in spirit, to be um, that they will be humble. And to look back at your word and to um, to renew and refresh and and go back to the right track from where they sidetrack Lord. And to go back to your um, to the only source of your authority, Lord, and um, to for to preach the gospel to all nations, Lord. And then let all the church go back to the Great Commission, Lord, and strengthen their faith and let them burn in passion for you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I pray for Ming as he as does the um, youth group and uh, the ministry, his ministry. Uh, let him uh, burn in passion for you, Lord, to, um, to uh, preach his word diligently, accurately, and um, to... Uh, raise up the next generations for his for your glory lord and yes, that lord. you would use me as a vessel to um use him as a vessel to uh yes, lord. proclaim the good news to all the use people. us god um, we're all, i pray for all of us to um as we learned in the beauty today to be meek in spirit to be humble and to um and to yes. show share the love of christ other people and to um yes. you know humbly yes. humbly um you know with love and with gentleness and with this with uh using the fruits of the holy spirit to yes. uh, minister to other people and to further your kingdom in jesus name i pray amen, amen. thank you brother that was very very good prayer and yeah. less anguish in our heart and be poor in spirit and uh, mm -hmm. for you are watching how can you be more gratitude in your life and how can you have that anguish do you anguish over the lord's death every morning and be thankful of what we receive that's how we become poor in spirit and that's the first criteria of sermon on mount and receiving kingdom of heaven so i'll see you guys in two weeks and um i would Hopefully, Kazuki-san can join us. You know, he's new and uh, he's coming to Colorado. So mm -hmm. if any of you guys are uh, staying in June, you want to meet him, uh, feel free to let me know and we can go out, um, maybe sushi or whatever. But um, look forward to you guys hearing the word of God. Read John. Hopefully, you guys are doing it at home and uh, continue just pray and give thanksgiving to God. So thank you for joining, Kazuki-san. And uh, arigato gozaimasu. And, uh, thank you for having me. Hey, yeah, I will see you guys next time. And uh, next time we'll go through um, what is meekness? We talk about meekness, right? And blessed are those who mourn and blessed are those who are meek. So we'll go through that next time. But um, that's it for today. Thank you for joining and I'll see you next time. All right.